What is going on everyone? This is Jason from YouTube talking about the stock market in general, talking about inflation. If you guys caught my live, I think it was Sunday night, uh, we talked a little bit about this and I really want to get this video out Monday uh, right when the market opened, but um, I just still had to get my thoughts together. And so even as I have my thoughts written down here, it's not a perfect outline, meaning that things just did not flow together, but I do encourage you to watch the whole thing. It may be a little bit long, but some of this information I think is very, very important. Again, I don't want to spread you know, FUD. I don't want to spread massive fear and uncertainty and doubt uh, across the whole stock market. But I think there is some data. There are some very intelligent people saying things. And I think we need to make sure we're listening and know what we can do as we move forward. And so, as you know, very early on, maybe like three, four weeks ago, I told you, hey, I'm going to get back in AMC. I'm going to get back in GameStop. I'm going to get into the just the deepest of deep conviction stocks, the Microvisions, the Palantirs, Jivos, Genius, stuff like that. And then I was going to open up some short positions, which again, yeah, you know, if you follow this channel anytime, I do not like shorting stocks, but I am not shorting any stock specifically. I am shorting through different ETFs. And so I'm doing that thing for I'm doing that for a reason and hopefully in this video I will uh, explain why I'm doing those things and so uh, again people ask what actual stocks am I invested in and again I've run through that before but I guess I want to tell you about a new positioning uh, I've been opening up this last week and some of it's even going into the last two three weeks but um, specifically this week opened up new positions here and why I think it will pay off uh, for me financially and if it doesn't, then that means all my other stocks are going to do well. So I look at it as kind of a hedge. Now, it's always not financial advice, not a financial advisor, just some guy from YouTube telling you about the research that I found. And so um, what we're talking about today is, is the stock market and specifically inflation. And so it does not take any uh, sense uh, to, to, or, or any you know, massive cognitive awareness to realize that inflation is upon us, that it's coming, it's creeping up. We're seeing it in different industries. And I told you like with some things, I kind of explained it away. So for instance, with wood, you know, that the price of growing a tree is not going up. And while transportation price may be going up a little bit, that really turning a piece of wood, a tree into a piece of plywood, the process should always be getting easier. The machine should be getting better. They should be running more efficiently. It should be something that's cheaper over the long run. And I feel like the inflation price on that is due to just a very, very high demand. And again, we all got locked down, so we wanted to do house improvements. People are moving like crazy right now. They're moving out of California, New York. So they're coming with money to cheaper states like Florida or Texas. They're seeking freedom. They're seeking, uh, you know, obviously cost of living is different. And so they're buying bigger houses. And so around me, just on my way to work, which is about 11 mile drive, I probably pass four, maybe five neighborhoods that are up and coming. The fifth one, they're just clearing the ground right now of hundreds of homes in these neighborhoods. And that's not uncommon for Central Florida. And so there's a lot of building going on. So the question is, is the price of wood, is this the new normal? Or is this transitory or temporary inflation? So I think with the price of wood, I said, this is, it's gonna come down. Maybe it doesn't come down to original prices, but it's gonna come down. So for a long time, I was very hesitant that there was this massive inflation coming. And you go back and you look at the data, basically starting in 2008 is when we start getting a separation from inflation. So inflation's like this, and the amount of money that's been printed has just kind of trallied with it. And this is throughout the whole 20th century. And so through the 80s and 90s, even in the early 2000s, wasn't a big deal. There was inflation, but money printed was right there with it. And what happened in 2008 is inflation was going and the money started printing straight up and it has not really stopped. There's been times where it'll slow down, but especially over the last year, year and a half, we've just been printing money left and right. And so what's that causing is, and again, stay with me. Uh, I'm trying to, to be as concise as possible. I'm trying to to clarify and explain, I guess, the things that took me a while to fully understand here over the last couple months. 
is that the printing of money by itself does not cause inflation, which I know, like, I thought, hey, if they're printing money, inflation's happening. But here we are the last 13 years, and again, inflation's gone up a little bit, but we want 2%. That a healthy economy does have inflation. But where we start running into issues is when there is inflation and there's no economic growth. And so what's been so bad about this last year and a half is that there has not been any economic growth. And so let me, I guess, reveal what I mean by that and why that is happening. So we know that job markets have been crushed for, we'll blame, go ahead and just blame Corona for the last 14 months. So what does that mean? Well, there's a whole lot of of services that have not been offered. So think about if your service was direct interaction with people. So we're looking at, you know, haircuts. Remember when Nancy Pelosi got her haircut and it was front page news for days and days and weeks and weeks? Think about anybody cleaning your home. You don't want people coming into your home, you're in quarantine. So again, any service, car detail, just the list goes on and on. Any service took a massive hit. Obviously restaurants, again, the restaurant's fine, but all those servers lost their jobs. I think about even a company like Steak and Shake. If you got those around you, little hamburger joint, they have reopened and they have reopened without servers. They are now counter service. It's like McDonald's where you go and you get your own refill that you don't, you, there's no tipping. There's no, you know, you just order your food and you go sit down. They call your number and you go get it. It's completely different for Steak and Shake. So all their servers. So again, a lot of service industry. And then how about all the production? Well, productions took a massive hit because we have not been using some of our uh, consumable, uh, I don't call them consumable goods like like food, but consumable re, uh, things that, that just wear out over time. So for instance, there's a lot less driving going on over the course of the last 14 months. So there hasn't been as many mechanics needed. So there's not as many parts being made. There's not as many tires being made or mounted and all those things. And this ripples itself out throughout the whole economy. And so when you don't have people going to work to make goods and you don't have people going to work to provide services, then even if we have all the money in the world, which the stimulus money has provided that, what am I gonna go buy? Nobody's making anything. I don't need anything. Uh, There's no service that, that people are providing. And so what does this money do? Well, instead of being passed around six or seven times like in a healthy economy, so for instance, a healthy economy, I would go and I would get my oil changed. So some of my money would go to the person who who helped get the oil there, the guy who changed the oil, the owner, and then what would he do with it? He would go and pay his rent, and then the landlord would go out to eat with it, and then the server would use it, and then the restaurant would use it. And that money would circulate in the economy several times over. But what are we seeing now? Money is basically finding itself into savings, into stocks, and into crypto very, very quickly. There's a whole slew of us, right? all of our stimulus money straight into the stock market, all of it into crypto, all of it into gold, all of it into silver, or maybe we bought things, but we didn't buy things that have that same, uh, you know, revolving of currency throughout the economy. And so let's say you bought a boat from Craigslist or from a friend. Well, you gave him the money and then what he do with it straight to the stock market straight to the savings account, that we are not seeing that flow of money that we need to see. And so what happens? Well, when we have too much money and there's not anything that we want, prices go up. It's a supply and demand issue. And so what we're seeing right now is that, and this is crazy to say, and I get, I get it's countercultural from what we're seeing on the news. But if you think about you, you think about your closest friends or family, how many of you actually needed that stimulus? How many of you actually needed it? That you spent that money on food, on rent, on utilities, even car maintenance? Not a lot of us. 
that most of us, again, we appreciate it, we used it, we put it to work, but we didn't go out and necessarily spend it like the government was expecting us to. Obviously, vacations are just starting to open up, but we had all this money and we thought, oh, maybe I'll go with a nice vacation, but where are we gonna go the last 15 months? The world's been closed down. So as you look at even CPI data, CPI data tracks basically what lower and middle class people spend their money on. But when middle class people get extra money, sometimes it almost puts us into the, to the upper middle class or the upper class where we're not spending it on things that the CPI data is gonna pick up. Again, we're investing. We're, we're buying things that don't show up on that CPI data. And so, and again, obviously anybody in the upper middle class or upper class, they're not spending anything on it because all of their needs are met. And so as we are basically like, how does this massive wealth gap get created? We're, we're, we're watching it firsthand through inflation, through stimulus money, through uh, the economy basically slowing down because there's not a lot of people working providing goods or services that are making us want to spend our money on things that would make the economy go round and round. So what am I going to be doing it? Well, obviously there's no putting the cat back in the back at this point. You cannot go out and, and I guess think about in the middle of all this, we have rising minimum wage. And so if, you know, your favorite department store, your favorite restaurant has to pay their employees, all of them, a dollar more an hour or $2 more an hour. It would be nice to think, well, the owner's just going to take a hit. But we all know that's not true. For obviously, for any small business, the owner's probably not making enough money to do that. And obviously, with any big business, they just don't care that they're going to raise their prices, that at the end of the day, the consumer will pay for that. And again, if that's the direction we want to go, hey, okay, it is what it is. It, it, that the economy will figure it out eventually. It's just the price we have to pay between now and getting it figured out. And so let's take your favorite restaurant. Maybe you could have eaten there for 7 or $8. Well, now the staff's going to be getting paid more. And we know the owner's going to make the same money. We know the manager was going to make the same money. And the employees are getting a, 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 a bump in pay. So now we're going to see how the prices go up and we're going to pay for it. And hopefully they keep all the staff on, the staff's able to, to get their pay increase, but that's part of the inflation coming around. And so again, you were going to see this. And I guess the question is, well, if it gets too bad and gets out of hand, what can we do? Well, let's talk about things that aren't going to work. We're not going to be able to pay people less and say, hey, that minimum wage rate, it didn't work out. So if we could just start paying you less, that's what we're gonna do. We know that we're not gonna start donating more money to the government. Hey, you can keep my stimulus check. Hey, this year, everybody's gonna pay an extra thousand dollars to help lower inflation. We know none of those things are gonna happen. And so it, the cat's out of the bag. There's no putting it back in. Inflation's gonna happen. The question is, what can we now do about it? Well, again, most of the time, societies are able to figure this out. We have a slew of countries that have gone before us with similar issues, and hopefully we will learn from their mistakes and we will not see the worst of the worst. We will not be Germany post-World War II. We will not be Zimbabwe. We will not come out with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars that we end up using for wallpaper because it's that worthless. So I think that we will raise rates and we will find a way to slow this down. Obviously we will raise taxes. Obviously we'll hopefully stop giving out so much money because that's part of the problem too, that right now, truth be told, people have more money than they know what to do with so we're putting in the stock market. It is what it is. Now again, I'm not out here saying that any of us are rich, but all the money we're putting in the stock market, there's a reason we're not using that money to pay our bills. There's a reason we're not money using that money to, to buy food, right? That, that, that's the kind of stuff that makes the economy go round and round. 
Now, I will say the stock market, obviously the companies at times do use that money. They do need that money and they use that money to uh, further their interests. So they'll use, they'll raise money to, you know, hire new people and, and, and come up with a new product or a new service or, you know, create something new. So I, I get that money in the stock market is not base zero, absolutely worthless. But when you compare it to the cycle of spending that, we do when we spend at a fast food joint or a local restaurant or a local department store or a local you know grocery store it's not close with the benefit that it does to the economy and again i'm not saying hey let's band together pull our money on stock market and go spend it at the grocery store but this is where we're at so what should we do well what i started looking up is what are other people doing and i came up to find Michael Berry, and we are going to see a lot of videos on him over the course of the next few weeks. And sometimes videos come out about him, things that he said, but it's too late. Like shorting Tesla, right? Like it's over, right? Tesla ran up to 900, came crashing down to 500, it's on its way back up. Will it be a bumpy ride? Will it be a volatile ride? Maybe. But if you start shorting Tesla now, you're playing with fire, right? So. If you caught in at 800 or 700, maybe you caught it on the way down, but for now, you're really playing with fire. That's old news. His uh, his files that he filed from Q1 or, or Q4 2020, like he's probably out of those positions by now. But with this one, um, there's a possibility that he's out of it, but what he's done and a strategy that I'm following, and again, I got this from him, is he is shorting the 20 year bond market. And so the way the bond market works is basically it takes uh, inflation data and it decides, you know, working with a, a lot of factors that, hey, this video is already 17 minutes long, so I'm not gonna jump into it too much. But it takes a lot of factors basically saying, how much is $100 going to be worth in 20 years from now? How much is $100 going to be worth in 10 years from now? Or $100 in, in five years from now? And so, Usually when you buy a bond, you're saying, okay, I want to buy a $100 bond and uh, I will pay $97 for it. And in two years, three years, five years, you turn in your bond and you get $100 out of it. You paid $97 for it. But when inflation starts coming, it messes those numbers up. And so the three, four stocks that I'm looking at right now, and I've started to invest in already, is TMV, TBF, TBT and TTT. And these are leveraged funds to short the 20 year bond market. Now, usually these funds come with a special risk. Your brokerage will probably say, hey, this is a special thing, something you should be in for days or weeks, not necessarily months or years. But for me, I think it is a very, very good hedge. And so it's something that I will probably build out to 3%, maybe 5% of my total portfolio and if none of this happens and inflation just goes away, then hey, I got 95% of my portfolio that should be doing very well. But if inflation happens and stocks go down, interest rates go up, and that's really what this is betting on is that interest rates will go up. And when the stock market goes down, then these being 3X leveraged uh, will really, really provide me a huge net of safety as interest rates go up and the stock market finds its equilibrium and hopefully the economy finds its equilibrium with inflation with how many dollars are out there and be able to get back on track again this is just it's a cycle it's a massive massive cycle and right now we are in a cycle where interest rates have been historic lows for a very very long time and so anybody who has invested in real estate they've been the beneficiary of this but you know when you hear about people talking about real estate dropping you know what could drop the price of real estate at a time like this and the answer is interest rates if interest rates go up your monthly mortgage payment again if you're already locked in it's not you unless you're on an arm but you, if you were to buy a house today at two percent interest let's say your house is two hundred thousand dollars your mortgage payment would be here but let's say in three years from now you buy a hundred fifty thousand dollar house but your interest rate is five percent your mortgage payment may be the exact same because of how the interest rates work. And we could see rates rise up. Again, 
it's not uncommon to see rates that are six, seven, eight percent. And I know it sounds crazy to say with the world being where it's at right now, but go back and look at through the 90s and we survived. And so again, these are, uh, I guess, seesaw, if you will. When interest rates are down, bonds go up. And when interest rates go up, the bonds have to come back down. So that's kind of what I'm seeing, what I am, I don't want to say betting on and, and investing on uh, too highly. Again, 5% of my uh, total portfolio, but I feel like that's probably my best hedge right now. And again, something that I don't see how we get out of inflation right now with either one, just wrecking the whole economy, Germany, World War II, Zimbabwe, or without doing a massive correction where you're, we're going to see the market, stock market and the housing market take a massive hit as interest rates go up to figure out this inflation stuff. But basically it will be, you know, losing the battle in order to win the war, to keep the American economy system moving forward that yes, we may see a lot of temporary pain. And again, I don't know if this is going to happen in three months, six months, nine months or a year from now. But I think it's something that has to happen in order for America to level out, that we have to, you know, pay our dues. We have to pay our debts, that that all of this free money does come at a cost. And the cost right now is that the interest rates are going to have to go up. Again, just one last thing as I, as I end in closing here, I guess what makes them work on a seesaw to explain that a little bit better is when your bond yield is let's say 3% so for 5 years so if you put in $97 today you wake up in 5 years you get 3% back great you you get 100 bucks that when that number starts to basically get under 2 and, and not keep up with what we want inflation to be 2 to 2.5% two that that's when people start looking at the stock market more and that's where we've been really the last five, six, seven years that people are looking at interest rates saying, I mean, I could make a guaranteed two, 3% or I could take my chances in the stock market. Let's take our chances in the stock market. But when the rates start moving and you see six, seven, eight percent and it's like, why am I playing the risk in the stock market when I can just get this guaranteed 7%, I could get this guaranteed 8%, I'm just gonna do that because that's a whole lot safer. And so, when all that money leaves the stock market and goes over into bonds, that's when we're going to feel the pain in the stock market. Again, it's not, it's not uh, something that happens, I guess, by default. It's something that human, humans cause, but who's, who's not going to take 8% guaranteed, right? There's some risk takers, me and you, but if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and you're looking at retirement or you're already retired, then yeah, you're gonna take that guaranteed five, six percent every single time and not worry about the stock market, especially after the last year we've had, especially a massive black swan event. Now that it's happened once, it's gonna be on our minds. What happens when the next virus comes? What happens when the next shutdown comes? Because we've just lived through one. And so anyways, I know this video is super long, but I thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below uh, if there's anything that you would like clarified or explained. Again, I don't know if I'm going to make this a whole series, uh, but I did want to keep you know updating about things that I'm actively doing. So I still have AMC and GameStop, which is paying off very well. Microvision was having a good run. And then again, these four stocks, and I'll go through them again, TMV, TBF, TBT, and TTT. Uh, and I'll put those uh, in the description as well so you can check them out. Please check out all the links in the description. Sign up with Webull if you haven't yet. Two free stocks. Get upside. I know it's kind of silly. I know like people are like, why do you have this on there? Because gas prices are up. And so every time I fill up, you know, I get to save a dollar, two dollars at the pump. So hey, save money, save money, right? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you all in my next video.